Welcome back, everyone, for Exodus chapter 26. And if you are a brother or sister in Christ, um, we need to be praying for those under severe persecution right now in China and in Africa. So if you could set aside a little time this week to be praying for those folks. There's been not, not really covered by the mainstream media, of course, um, but keep them in your prayers. Okay, so continuing on with the measurements and design for the tabernacle from yesterday, um, we learn here that God is a God of great detail and organization. And in my opinion, I believe what we're about, what we're reading and we're going to see in some of the pictures um, is just a taste of what we'll get in heaven, which is really neat. So very fascinating. Here we go. Verse 1. Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twisted linen and blue and purple and scarlet material. You shall make them with cherubim, the work of a skillful workman. The length of each curtain shall be 28 cubits, and the width of each curtain 4 cubits, and um, all the curtains shall have the same measurements. And if you missed chapter 25 yesterday, a cubit was approximately the length from one's elbow to their fingertips. Okay, verse 3. Five curtains shall be joined to one another, and the other five curtains shall be joined to one another. You shall make loops of blue on the edge of the outer, out, outermost curtain in the first set, and likewise, you shall make them on the edge of the curtain that is the outermost in the second set. So very detailed and orderly and lots of color. Okay, verse 5. You shall make 50 loops in the one curtain, and you shall make 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is in the second set. The loops shall be opposite each other. You shall make 50 clasps of gold, and join the curtains to one another with the clasps, so that the tabernacle will be a unit. Then you shall make curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. You shall make eleven curtains in all. The length of each curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains shall have the same measurements. Verse 9, you shall join five curtains by themselves and the other six curtains by themselves, and you shall double over the sixth curtain at the front of the tent. You shall make 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the first set, and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the second set. You shall make 50 clasps of bronze, and you shall put the clasps into the loops and join the tent together so that it will be a unit. The overlapping part that is left over in the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that is left over, shall lap over the back of the tabernacle. Verse 13. The cubit on one side and the cubit on the other, of what is left over in the length of the curtains of the tent, shall lap over the sides of the tabernacle on one side and on the other, to cover it. You shall make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering of porpoise skins above. Um, so after some research, the porpoise used here is likely referring to a dugong, which is a similar um, animal to a manatee and lived in the, Red, in the Red Sea. Its thick skin would have provided great protection and insulation. Verse 15, Then you shall make the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood, standing upright. Ten cubits shall be the length of each board, and one and a half cubits the width of each board. There shall be two tenons for each board fitted to one another. Thus you shall do for all the boards of the tabernacle. A tenon was a hand or a yod by which the 48 boards were kept in place. Each board had two tenons which were joined securely into it. These tenons would be made of harder wood than acacia, so as to better stand the strain of wind and weather. They also made it easier to transport the tabernacle. Verse 18, you shall make the boards for the tabernacle, 20 boards for the south side. You shall make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, two sockets under one board for its two tenons, and two sockets under another board for its two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, 20 boards, and there 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. For the rear of the tabernacle to the west, 
you shall make six boards. You shall make two boards for the corners of the tabernacle at the rear. They shall be double beneath, and together they shall be complete to its top, to the first ring. Thus it shall be with both of them. They shall form the two corners. There shall be eight boards with their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. Then you shall make bars of acacia wood, five for the boards of one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the rear side to the west. And the point of the rear side being to the west is because the sun would set there and a lot of pagan gods would worship facing the sun, so it was kind of they were turning their back to the sun. Okay, verse 28. The middle bar in the center of the board shall pass through from end to end. You shall overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold as holders for the bars, and you shall overlay the bars with gold. Then you shall erect the tabernacle according to its plan which you have been shown in the mountain. This warning was sounded that the blueprint must be carefully followed. Nothing was to be left to human guesswork, no matter how skilled the craftsman may have been. Verse 31. You shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. It shall be made with cherubim, the work of a skillful workman. You shall hang it on the four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold, their hooks also being of gold, on four sockets of silver. Verse 33, you shall hang up the veil under the clasps and shall bring in the ark of the testimony there within the veil. And the veil shall serve for you as a, as a partition between the holy place and the holy of holies. Big deal there. Thir verse 34, you shall put the mercy seat on the ark of the testimony in the holy of holies. You shall set the table outside the veil and the lampstand opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south and you shall put the table on the north side. Again, if you missed yesterday, the mercy seat was the lid or covering of the ark where blood would be sprinkled on behalf of sin. It's also where um, God's presence would be. Verse 36. You shall make a screen for the doorway of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine twisted linen, the work of a weaver. You shall make five pillars of acacia for the screen and overlay them with gold their hooks also being of gold, and you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. All right, great detail. Uh, really actually enjoying this construction project here, and thank you for being here. Again, uh, keep those under persecution and prayer. I'll be praying for you guys. Hope you have a great week, and uh, keep on keeping on. God bless you.